Will do so, John. Can I start talking already? You can start talking already. Um, the people will just file in as you talk. Okay. All right. Excellent. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, conversation. Today, the ASDSA is having a conversation with uh, Yopi Nell, um, the famous Yopi Nell, I think. Uh, although Yopi probably get a bit embarrassed about that. And just a little bit of background about Yopi. Uh, he has been involved in NQF stuff since 1994 when he was part of the National Training Board, working with the Minister of Labor, developing strategy for South Africa and eventually being part of the work that led to our NQF, the National Qualifications Framework. And he was so excited about that, similar to me in 1998, he joined SACWA and he worked for SACWA for a while. And then uh, in due course, and I think it's the, I don't know what it, what it happened to me as well. He left SACWA, started his own business. And part of that in that journey, he actually went and worked for the Kingdom of Bahrain and got some international experience on uh, NQF's uh, qualification development, RPL, all those things to do with what is our, you know, our daily stuff that we work with. Uh, in 2018, I think it was too hot for him there in the Middle East. He came back and he rejoined SACWA and we're very grateful that he did. And he's been at SACWA ever since in the registration and recognition space. And uh, he's going to share with us some of the developments at SACWA and the NQF and this thing called the PSET system. So with that, there are all the rules. Welcome to the conversation. Angelique, if you can stop sharing. And Yopi, if you can show us your happy face and maybe share your slides. And uh, hello, Yopi. I hello, can see you there. <laughs> no, let me, let me uh, first, uh, first on my happy face. Yeah, that's my happy face, you know. Um, then I will share now. Uh, John, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I just want to make sure that I do show what I need to show and the right. Um, then I just need to swap quickly. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> what I will look at, and John, thank you for the opportunity. It's always a pleasure to speak about the NKF. Um, as you indicated, I'm really passionate about the whole system. And, and many times that when you look at our developments and we, we tend to, we, we need to actually uh, be careful that you don't go into a specific groove, you know, that you need to be, you need to be open to all the developments. And my experience that people tend to go off into one pathway without really looking at, at other areas that we need to look at. Um, I, will, I will look at, for example, at, at if you look at the historical development of the NKF, and I don't want to go into too much detail on that we, are limited, we do have limited time, but I think that what's important is that when we started with the NKF in 1995, is that they were a role in place for everybody in the system. If I said all in place, it might be part of the development of qualifications and standards for qualifications, as well as part of the quality assurance of qualifications in the ATQA um, regulations. And professional bodies specifically also had the special role to claim there where they had to, to apply for accreditation status as an education training quality assurance body to accredit certain qualifications in their own space. But also what happened is that uh, what's important, we do have uh, an eight level NKF uh, where qualifications were registered. And then if you can see also that it was reviewed um, since 2001, 2002, that led to the promulgation and the implementation of the NKF Act in 2009 and the establishment of a 10 level framework. And this is part of the development within the whole key set system. You know, it's the trans, um, transition between the 8 level NKF and the 10 level NKF. And that created a big issue. Yopi, can, can I just interrupt you for a minute? I don't know. Sure. Um, we, we, we're struggling to hear you clearly. I'm not sure if you can maybe pull your laptop a bit closer or something. I will do that. Um, 
I've also just give me a minute. I just want to close the window behind me. Yeah, I don't think it's the window. Eh? I think it's. I think it might be um, the microphone, but I don't think that there's much that you can do at this moment no. about that. Okay, I'll, I'll go on. Hopefully, it will be better now. But you see, I'm sitting closer, so I'm getting bigger on the screen. But, so, no, we, but, yes, yeah. John? Okay, just keep trying. I mean, yeah, we'll do the best we can. This is the world okay. of one life. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, but I, I think that. Um, some of the challenges, as I indicated, from eight level NKF to ten level NKF, that qualifications registered on the eight level NKF reached the registration end date in June 2023, and that created some real concerns and issues also. Um, and I think that it's just what I indicated that um, what we developed so far is this um, um, policy criteria. We implemented the NKF, this review of the NKF or the NKF Amendment Act already published, we just wait for the president to um, provide a date to implement this and all indications that it will be before the end of 2023. Um, that will create a different challenge. But I think that if um, as part of this also, um, and I know people may know that the pen level framework, sub frameworks with the quality councils in each of these sub frameworks, but they also develop their own qualification structures or qualification types. I don't want to go into too much detail and tackle on the responsibilities, but this is by by law. Um, and I think that what, what I can focus on is maintaining a, a database of all learner achievements, the registration of qualifications, recognition of professional bodies, uh, evaluation of foreign qualifications. And I know that there are some concerns about it outside of the SECWA, uh, but um, we are dependent on feedback from uh, providers outside South Africa where learners com uh, completed the qualifications. The verification of qualifications is also very important, and that relates to the registration of qualifications. So if, if the qualification is registered, if not, then we need to follow up with the provider to ask why this is not registered. And that, by, that that's going back to the level in care. Um, if we look at the objectives, I don't want to go into too much detail here. Because what we're doing is that we really work towards um, facilitating access, mobility, and progression, quality of education to accelerate redress of past unfair discrimination. Um, John, I just want to know you you muted or you closed my video. No, no, you, you're fine. Your sound is much better, so that's better. Uh, yeah, okay. you'll be, I uh, switched your video okay. off for uh, sound purposes. Okay. No, no, so, but we can still hear you, Yarby. No problem. Thank you for that. Um, no. I've already got... No, no, I was just worrying that uh, I was, that you dropped off. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks. If you, if you look at the structure of the NQ qualification types, and, and this is where we do get some challenges and where SACPA really uh, playing an authoritative role is... When you look at qualifications, and, and, and we do have issues that people completed qualifications in 1995 and earlier, and, and as well as completing qualifications up to about 2009, 2008, not really registered on the NKF. Remember that when we look at the NKF is that each quality council, as I indicated, is responsible for managing their own sub framework. So they identify the qualification types. Um, to have a standard type of qualification uh, with specific criteria. If you look at diplomas, diplomas at NKF level six, uh, 360 credits. So that's a standard qualification. So if you do a diploma, it, people need to understand that that's at NKF level six. From, OK, from the QSF, um, OQSF perspective, they've got an occupational diploma that what we need to remember is that again, at NKF level six, minimum credits 360. So we, they try to get a parity of esteem between the qualification types that people can trust that it's a qualification registered under NKF. We do have sometimes people coming back to say, but they've got an advanced diploma at NKF level six and said it's not a, a recognized qualification and that qualification is then also not registered on the NKF. And they, they then try to push SACWA to recognize it. And we say that we cannot. It's that we look at what the act is saying stating that all qualifications or all educational programs or learning programs leading to qualifications must be registered on the NKF. And then it's also, it must be offered in South Africa or offered in South Africa must be registered on the NKF. 
And that creates a, a, another issue about international qualifications and the offering of national international qualifications. Uh, DHET and Uma Lucy um, already uh, requested um, a legal opinion from the government state attorneys, and they came back and said it's illegal to offer any international qualification if it's not registered on the NQF. Um, when we look at, um, I don't want to go into detail here because this is the accreditation application accreditation, because we need to consider the context differences between the sub frameworks where uh, providers within higher education, according to the Higher Education Act, they need to develop programs leading to qualifications. And once they've done that, they apply for accreditation from CHE, and I'm speaking about public providers. Uh, private providers need to re be registered with DEED, and then they need to develop the program, submit to CHE for accreditation. Once it is accredited, then what they do is that they will recommend the qualification to SACWA. And, and many times that there are quite a lot of issues and, co and, and concerns to say, why do we do CHE work from SACWA's perspective? And, and we keep on saying that when you look at the accreditation, they look at totally different criteria. Qualification is a document that they need to submit as part of their accreditation process, and SEC was evaluating the qualification document. The other understanding is also that a qualification, now a higher education perceives a qualification, is that what they see, the certificate that you get at the end of your learning, when you pass all the assessments, that that is the qualification. And we do have different requirements when looking at qualifications and evaluating qualifications. If it meets the criteria, then we will register that. It will be on, on the NQF and on the searchable database. Anybody can look at the qualifications. Just also a concern here currently with SACWA is that higher education currently, or there were about 9,000 registered qualifications on the higher education qualification sub framework. And then we found out there are lots of duplications or qualifications on the sub framework not accredited by higher education. So 30 June 2023, all basically all higher education qualifications reached the registration end date also. Uh, and now there are about 6,900 6, and I think about 50 qualifications registered. Um, and that creates now an issue with SACWA is that they CHE requested until June next year. They will go through all the qualifications and our policy states that it must meet our policy and criteria. And, and a very quick check around that showed that about 4,000 of these qualifications registered still 1998, 2003, not adhering to our policy and criteria. So that creates an uh, issue for SACWA. Um, we're working with CHE and how to deal with that. If you look at, at QCTO, is that what Yopi, QCTO is? Yopi, I'm Yopi. listening. Yopi, can I just stop you? I've got a, I've got a CHE question or a higher yeah. education question. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Excellent. I, I've just got a question I'd like you on that. Um, so there are, and I mean, I can think of two institutions that I know people have studied and have got uh, uh, higher education qualifications. The one is uh, uh, the one is an institution from the United States, and another one is the institution from the UK, where those people study those qualifications in South Africa, but they did them online. So just now you said, no, no, it's illegal to offer a qualification in South Africa unless it's registered on the NQF. But there are many international uh, uh, providers offering qualifications in South Africa. What's your comment on that? Um, basically also that we've got a recent uh, legal opinion from the state attorneys or state lawyers where they indicate that online courses are also, they cannot offer it online. The whole, I, the whole issue here is that it, it, um, if you look at our policy and criteria, as well as the Higher Education Act, is that any program offered in South Africa must be accredited by higher education, if it's a higher education qualification. So that's based on that, is that the legal opinion said that it is not possible, because how will you then um, evaluate, give a foreign evaluation for that qualification, where the qualification is offered in South Africa? So it's, it's not an international qualification or a foreign qualification, if you understand what I'm trying to say, because it's offered in South Africa. And in, if it's offered in South Africa, it, it should be according to the Higher Education Act and the NQF Act registered with SATWA. Uh, but it is a debate that, that we are having now. Um, and, and we're looking with DEIT, with the quality councils and SACWA, looking at 
uh, a clearer policy on, on offering our foreign qualifications online or physically in South Africa. But the Higher Education Act is, is very specific. If it's a physical um, uh, um, uh, offering of qualifications here, uh, they must be registered with the, they must be a registered entity in South Africa, and it must be registered on the NQF. Online courses is a, slight, no. a slightly different animal that we're looking at. Okay, so I mean, that's a long conversation. Itself. I appreciate your response. There are lots of people commenting, but I'll take it, I will take it up with you maybe as a very specific conversation early next year. Um, Not maybe problem. if you could just continue with your presentation, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Thank, thank you. In KCTO, is that what I indicated is that I do follow a different process where, and please don't look at, let me just go there, is that where Qualifications are developed basically under the auspices of QCTO in consultation with CETOs uh, and other um, expert practitioners. Then what they do recommend the qualification or uh, then QCTO recommends the qualification for registration to SACWA. And we also evaluate it again according to our, our policies and criteria. And once it's registered, then providers can then apply for accreditation to offer that qualification. So just the different in con difference in context is that in, in higher education, it's a provider based qualification. Um, and then within um, the QCTO space, it is a nationally national qualification where providers can apply to offer that, um, that qualification. There are different uh, challenges in both systems, but I think that currently it, it's not an issue and, we, and it's working well. Um, then we, I, I don't want to go into too much detail in each of these criteria, but that's what SACWA is using. And part of that is that how does SACWA play a role in the whole PSET system? That when you look at, at the role players, is that especially uh, looking at your field, subfield title, is that we need to make sure that it's addressing what they need to address. But the, the, the biggest point here is the purpose and the rationale, you know, is that the purpose is for the provider the, or for the qualifications that what the learner will get out of this qualification. The rationale is why should they actually do this qualification? And from SACWA perspective, what we look at is that, is there a real need? What is the need for the qualification? And that should be reflected in the rationale. Um, and, and part of our process in in this to make sure that we don't have qualifications just for the sake of qualifications on the system, is that when they apply for re-registration, we check, for example, are the learners in the system? Did learners complete the qualification? If for a five-year period, no learner intake, then we question that. So, but is it possible that you, that you registered the qualification, you do have a qualification, no learners? So that is part of our checks and balances, making sure that the qualification is still relevant for industry. Um, the basis also is that when you look at higher education, how they develop, we kept on saying and we kept on pushing for that, that they need to make sure that industry or community or businesses are also involved in the in, in, in looking at the qualification, making sure that it's applicable to industry. And, and especially UOTs, that the universities of technologies, they start doing that. Um, your traditional universities, slightly different. They will keep on saying, but we're autonomous. We, we don't need industry, actually. Um, then you can also look at international comparability. What we're looking at is making sure that the qualification is internationally comparable. And many times what we do found is that it's a new qualification in South Africa, a new qualification in the world, for example. And there's no real qualification in a specific area. Um, and especially when you look at your occupationally based qualifications in, in mining, is that our mining system is totally, totally different than the system outside South Africa. We've got deep mining, underground mining, and internationally, they've got open mining. So the way that we do and what we need to do is vastly different than what they do internationally. So actually, is that we set in the standard. Looking at international comparability, looking at the standard, there are standards, not necessarily, necessarily qualifications that we can also compare to, to say that meeting the standard or the qualification uh, incorporate, uh, incorporates the, um, the standard also. Um, I think that part of this is also to, some of the challenges is that SACWA is now internally reviewing the processes of 
of looking at qualifications. Should we evaluate qualifications? Should we be the quality assurer of these qualifications where we audit quality councils in making sure that they're applying the policies and criteria? So these are debates going on to say, what is the real role of SACWA, the QCs, what is, and, and how qualifications are registered then on the NKF. It's not that they will change the system. It's still the 10 level framework. They will not change that. They will not change the sub frameworks. It's just operational issues that we, that we are looking at. The same is with professional bodies that, you know, SACWA uh, recognized about 102 professional bodies of which about 18 statutory councils and the rest are non statutory professional bodies. And again, is that what in, at SACWA is that we, we keep on people complaining about professional bodies and, and, and when we report, uh, report back and say, but in investigating this is that we don't see that the professional body is uh, transgressing the policy and criteria, they keep on coming back with something different. So in, in the review of the professional bodies, what we do is that we do have all, we had uh, a, a external body appointed by the SACWA board, looking at applications and re-recognitions re and re-registration of designations. But what was found is that the, the people on the body itself uh, represented their own own interests and they fight for their own interest and not looking at, at the professional body space. So part of the discussions that, that we looked at is to say, what do we mean by a profession? I think that that is one big question is that how can we define a profession? And, and, and part of this profession, I will go through my other slides in, in, as part of this discussion, is that even here, there are lots of, of disagreements to say, for example, is that, do you see uh, a, a, a medical doctor as a profession? Everybody will jump up and say, yes, we do. But then you said, but do you see an electrician as a profession? And people say, no, 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 that's not a profession, that's an occupation. So those are part of the discussions that we do have. Uh, the same is that when you look at teachers and trainers, are they profession, professionals? And if you say yes, do they meet the criteria? And that is part of our um, going ongoing um, investigations. Is that uh, I will end up with with a quote uh, later on uh, about this also. Um, what we all say is what it is about public trust and understanding in profession, and allowing a professional to act as an agent for the professional body. And that is many times the discussions also to say that, do they do that? Is, is, if you designate a person, do they really act as an agent for the professional body? And then what's the role of the professional body really in the whole space? So should we look at, at the professions and the professional, or should we look at professional bodies and trust that the professional bodies will look at the professional and the profession? Um, but to come back to say, what is a profession? Is that this is a picture here? And when you ask people, what do you see? They'll say, it's a doctor, it's a profession. They'll say, yes, it is. An accountant, people say, yes, an accountant, accountancy is a profession, lawyers. But then when you look at the changes globally, changes in markets, changes in finances, changes in technology, there are new emerging um, professions coming up. And, and then when you look at most of the time about your accountants, your lawyers, your doctors, these are professions where government plays a role. So many times that what they will do is that they will regulate these professions to make sure that these people are really qualified. They do uh, instill trust in, 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 uh, in the public service and they are also acting uh, ethically. But the other professions are then recognized by the market if, for example, you look at a trainer, it is recognized as a profession by the market. If you look at IT, it's a new development, new developments taking place there every time. So it's a new profession. If you look even at plumbing, so the question is that if you look at this part here, and now you can look at the occupational framework of occupations in South Africa or the ISCAT internationally, it said that they put that in a continuum to say that your professional, highly recognized traditional professionals is high on top, NKF level seven and eight, nine, 10. And then you've got associate professionals at level six and maybe at level five. And the rest below is not really a profession. And that's a debatable also. 
because you may get other people at the lower level and they're still expert, experts because of their knowledge and skills. And we'll come back to that a little bit later. When you look at the attributes is that of a profession, it's an organized group. And that is what we keep on saying is that people, a person is not a profession. A profession is an organized group that interacts with society and performs social functions. So it possesses theory, the underlying knowledge or expert skills. And again, this is a debate, you know, how do we see this underlying knowledge? At what level of the NKF? Is it at level only from levels from level seven? Or can you look at level six, maybe at level five, depending on the skills that the person uses? And that's the biggest debate between your academically based professional body saying that, no, we need to have a high level of, of knowledge, where your occupational body say, no, but I need to have the knowledge, but I need to know how to apply my knowledge as part of my skills to solve a problem. Authority is that in the space, in the profession that they, that they act, there's authority people um, trust again that, they, that these people can speak based, they do have the authority based on their knowledge to speak about that. Recognition, you can see recognition is not SACWA recognition, recognition by government, state councils, recognition by market, uh, by the market or market forces or businesses, and recognitions by the community. The community may also say, this is a profession that we recognize. Ethics very, very high on the, li on the list here, because you need to be uh, ethical. And then cult culture is that how, as a profession, with a professional body, how, how do you act? How do you look at? What do you need to look at? Um, and can I then develop? Can I progress? Or is it only about service? Um, a professional, I don't want to go into too much detail here, professional knowledge, autonomous judgment, need to be ethical, need to be an expert, need to be skilled, and people need to trust him. And then I've got two slides more, John. The one here is that if you look at an example, if you are sick, you go to a doctor and you trust that the doctor will treat you with the based on the knowledge and experience that that doctor has. So that's the trust. And many times that when you go to a doctor, he will look at you, he will try to diagnose the uh, symptoms, and he will then prescribe medication. If it's not going away, you will go back to the doctor. You will still trust that the doctor will solve your problem. And that's the same with that. When you look at the plumbing, and I'm just taking this as an example, is that people tend to say that I don't have the expertise. I'm an amateur in plumbing. I will call a professional to really come and fix my problem. This is the quote that I want to say. Once a person enters industry, a professional body is the ideal means of their further skills development through CPD and is therefore considered part of the strategic learning and skills infrastructure in South Africa. And this is in a paper from Naidu and Raj Kumar in 2020. John, thank you very much. That is my, my contribution. Okay, Yapi, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, ASDSA is one of the SACWA records nice professional bodies. So we're glad to hear that uh, you're still positive about professional bodies because we certainly believe professional bodies, good professional bodies, ones that meet all the criteria and, it's, and in fact sometimes exceed the criteria set by SACWA can play a really meaningful role and a significant role in, in South Africa. So thank you for, for the presentation. Um, I've got uh, one question that I would like to just ask. You said the NQF Amendment Act was coming in before the end of this year. Uh, should we be looking out for that? And will you alert us if it is published? Because sometimes things come out on the 24th of December and we might miss them. <laughs> yeah, no, no, the point is that um, we will definitely let people know. Remember that the Act is already there. It's just a matter of that it needs to be um, I, I cannot say promulgated because it's already yeah. there. It's just the minister needs to, the president needs to say it's it's an act from this day. Um, okay. I know that also D8 is working hard, but yes, we will inform, we will communicate, we will let people know. Okay, then, and, and in that regard, then I would like to say thank you, but before I say goodbye, I want to hold you, uh, I want to ask you, not hold you, I want to ask you, there's two topics that I think came out of today. The one is the impact of the NQF Amendment Act. We've forgotten all those th conversation we had. So we'd, we'd like to invite you or someone from SACWA to talk about the act 
as soon as we know it's now, you know, in daily practice. Uh, and then the other conversation is this conversation about international qualifications. Because many of us as uh, skills development advisors, skills development professionals, we will look, to be honest with you, we will look beyond the borders of South Africa and maybe say to a client, that qualification at Harvard Business School is the one your top team should go to. Uh, and they would take it online. So there's a whole conversation there about inter international qualifications. So these two qualifications, uh, conversations I'd like to ask SACWA to be ready to have with the ASTSA members next year early, if possible. John, thank you very much. I just quickly scroll also down the comments here and and I see that there's, uh, I think it's Janine who made the, the comment about the MBA in Netherlands. Um, what is also happening is that we do um, have, a, we, we are in negotiations with various countries in looking at qualifications. Um, the Netherlands is basically one of those also where we look at and 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 we're having frequent sessions with with Netherlands in our education as well as in TVET space on, on how can we recognize what's the differences, how can we assess each other. Um, and then basically is that as part of the the memorandum or the mutual recognition of qualifications, what we're looking at is that as soon as we sign that with the various countries that we will have an, an addendum in that agreement of providers in that specific country who, who who can offer those qualifications because even they indicated that there are providers there that they don't recognize. And, and I think that that is part of the discussion about the international part of qualifications that we need to be careful that we providers may say we are recognized and then we you do the qualification and eventually you find out it's not recognized. Mm -hmm. um, we can also do, John, there's, there's something that we can do about um, qualification molds, uh, what they call exact, uh, and it's scary. It's really, yeah. really scary. Okay. And that is why we keep on saying that no to international things. Thank you, John. Thank you, Yopi, and, and thanks to everybody that joined us for today. Uh, Yopi, I'm very much grateful for your time, and I look forward to having a, a number of uh, conversations with you in 2024 on all these matters related to our, our wonderful South African NQF and PSET system. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Thank okay. you, John. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Yopi. Cheers in. Bye. All right.